Well, generally on a, on a chest pain type call, we'll actually have five guys there. So we'll have a fire truck and the ambulance. Uh, every, every call pretty much starts the same way, just with the basics. We have four bags that have, contain all of our equipment that we carry on the entire ambulance. So a jump kit is a bag we take into every call, regardless of nature. It's got BLS stuff on the outside of it, like uh, the blood pressure cuff and stethoscope. It's got bandages. Uh, it's got pulse oximeter, you, you know, the thing you put on your finger when you go to the doctor. Um, uh, diabetic equipment to check blood sugars and all that. So when we arrive on the scene of a chest pain, as we walk in the door, we're going to be looking at the person, trying to size up how they look. Are they pale? Are they flush? What's going on with their skin? Why is before we even make contact? And then as soon as we get in the door, uh, a couple of different people do different things. One person's gathering uh, general patient information, medications, history, anything that they can find. Chest is going to compress. Dan Smith. The lead medic will be the one addressing the patient. Um, he's going to, a lot of times, check the vital signs, uh, make sure the patient's breathing adequately. We start with ABC, um, airway breathing and circulation. How long pain going on? About 10 minutes or so. Uh, I want to get chess, uh, questions related to um, what does it feel like, where does it hurt, does it hurt more when you, do, when you breathe uh, deeply, uh, and then a history, uh, what kind of, if they have no cardiac history whatsoever and they seem like a generally healthy person, then uh, it's less likely that it's going to be an uh, actual cardiac event, but we're going to treat it as such anyway. Okay, we're going to put you on a little bit of oxygen, see if we can help you out a little bit. How are you feeling right now? Yeah, you know, I feel pretty good. Right? Well, as soon as the guy hits the floor, we, most of the nice thing about having uh, fire and EMS being closely related is everybody kind of has an idea of what their job is. So. The two medics are going to jump right into it, and, but they're going to be doing most of the advanced stuff, so we'll get everything out. So if they hit the ground, if it's a witness to rest, we're going to get the fast patches on right away. Okay? And if it's a shockable rhythm, we're going to shock right away. If it's not a witness to rest, we do CPR first. Um, I think a lot of people on TV, they'll, they'll see the, the, they shock them all the time. Their heart has to be in a specific rhythm for us to shock. A lot of people don't know that. They think, well, shock them. We can't always shock them. We have to identify the rhythm, and we can do that on our, our uh, monitors. We can interpret the rhythm and then determine if we need to shock them or not. So we'll do CPR right away. Another guy's getting the fast patches out. We get the fast patches on. We check the rhythm. If, we, if it's a shockable rhythm, when we shock them, and then we go right into CPR again. And then it's kind of a cycle. Two minutes of CPR, check the rhythm. Can we shock it? Yes or no? CPR, two minutes, and then in the meantime, we're pushing drugs. Um, epinephrine is the main drug we push in cardiac arrest. Okay. Where are we at in CPR? We're switching right now. Switching right now? Yeah, let's go ahead and move. Okay. If, uh, if this person just went down recently and we feel like we can get a pulse back with, because we have all the equipment we need to, uh, to, get a, to get a return of circulation, then we might stay in the house and work for a little bit, see if we can get a pulse back. All those times moving someone into, onto the cot, into the ambulance, those, are, it, those could interrupt chest compressions, and we need to make sure that we keep quality chest compressions the whole time. So we might stay there for a little while, see if we can get a pulse back, and then it would be a better time to move them when they have their own pulse than for us to be doing CPR. Sometimes our, our biggest challenge is getting them from the house to the ambulance, because we try to do um, uninterrupted CPR all the time. It's gonna get interrupted, but we, we try to keep that at a, at a minimum. And if we've got to go down a flight of stairs, it's almost impossible to do CPR going downstairs. We do have this device called an uh, auto pulse. It's like a mini backboard that uh, goes on the back of the patient, and it's like a band that straps around their chest, and it actually does compressions. So we don't have to actually physically do them. So that auto pulse is, uh, is real beneficial in situations like that. We can actually get them out of the house while we're doing CPR, but on average, it's anywhere from from 10 to 15 minutes, I'd say, from getting them, or walking up to the house and getting them into the back of the ambulance. Shot a few times with the uh, ABD, uh, come up to the cardiac monitor again, showing uh, shot another time. 
did get one round at me. Uh, it was defibrillated again while in VTAC. Currently have a sinus rhythm and uh, return spontaneous. Um, sometimes we've had them in the ambulance within uh, five minutes. Sometimes I've had, we've sat on scene for 20 minutes. So I, I say an average of 10 minutes or so, we might have them in the ambulance and start moving. Mm -hmm.